My friends, we have witnessed another week of chaos and division in our nation's capital. The disappointment, confusion, and anger is running deep in our land. But Proverbs 3 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Our first response must be one of trust. First and foremost, in the Lord with all our heart, but also in the goodness of people. Through the lens of the media, we only see a fraction of the people at work in our world, and usually only from the extreme ends. We have to trust that the massive majority of people in our world are hard at work doing justice and loving kindness. Kindness, we must believe this. And then lean not on our own understanding. Friends, we are not the final authority over our lives or this world. We believe in a loving and gracious God who has spun us into existence and bids us to live in such a way as to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And we can't do that work alone, but we must lean on and learn from the understandings of others. We must do this. Between now and the next time we are together for worship, our nation will inaugurate a new president. And whether we like it or not, we have the chance at a new beginning. So let us each, individually and every day, do all we can to bring about the peaceable kingdom that Jesus lived and died for. Welcome to Modern Worship at Wayzata Community Church. My name is Danielle Jones, and I'm part of the pastoral team. In this liminal, transitional time, we're experimenting with new and multiple styles of worship, including this modern style. As you know by now, you can select the style of worship that you prefer and join us for live stream worship at either 8, 9, 10, or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. If you're viewing this on Facebook, we encourage you to give our new platform a chance. Just click the link in the comment bar below to jump over to WCC's homepage and join the online worship style of your choice. Our new platform allows all the interaction and connectivity of Facebook without the distractions. Today, we continue our God's Waiting Room series, acknowledging the ripeness of liminal time, in between times, where God is uniquely at work in us and in the world. January 2021 is certainly an in-between time. So let's come together in a spirit of unity and worship. Light a candle to acknowledge the presence of the Spirit. Greet those who are with you with a smile or a hug, and let's worship God together. I waited in the hope. 
My imperfections His light is shining through Though damn I am a still a reflection of His mercy and truth So I wait in the promise I wait in the hope Yes, I wait in the power Of God's unending love Of God's unending love Oh, restless heart do not grow weary, hold on to faith and wait. Jesus was no stranger to in-between days, to liminality, where the future is unclear. One of the most memorable times of discernment for Jesus was his time in the desert, after baptism and before his public ministry. So listen now to Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, as I read it from the Common English Version. Jesus returned from the Jordan River, full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, It's written, people won't live only by bread. Next, the devil led him into a high place and showed him in a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It's written, You will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For it's written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, it's been said, don't test the Lord, your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. In the summer of 2015, as part of a sabbatical, I ventured a spiritual and physical pilgrimage in Northern Ireland. As part of this small group experience, we spent a full day on the shore of Loch Ley in the presence of a husband and wife pair of Celtic mystics. Their names were Terry and Jerry, and to this day, I still don't know which was which. Each member of our group was given an allotted period of time to spend privately with these spiritual gurus who would lay hands on us and pray over us. Beneath the weight of their forehands, stacked on top of my head, and with the lake breeze blowing in my ears, through their Irish brogue and thick Northern Ireland accents, I heard both of them repeatedly pray that I would be grinded, grinded. Now, when my time with this quirky pair of Celtic mystics was up, I went directly to the spiritual director of our group and asked him what could it possibly mean that I would be grinded. He paused briefly, then looked at me and laughed out loud. He tried to fight through his own thick Irish accents, accent to assure me that they were praying for me to be grounded, not grinded. We are in the second week of a worship series called God's Waiting Room. This is a phrase borrowed from Richard Rohr who says, We have to allow ourselves to be drawn into sacred space, into liminality, betwixt and between the familiar and the completely unknown. Rohr calls this space God's Waiting Room, where we are taught openness and patience as we await an appointment with the Divine Doctor. Last week, I suggested that shift happens 
that we are wise to actively shift from knowing to unknowing, from advocating to attending, from striving to surrender. This week, we turn to one of Jesus' liminal experiences to find ways that we too might be grinded. Let us pray. Ground us, O God, in your great goodness and your great love for us. As a gift of your Spirit, speak to us, for your church is listening. In usual or typical times, our lives are largely driven by movement and action and progress toward some stated goal. But in liminal times, our focus changes. We have the unique opportunity to be more grounded and in tune with ourselves and with God rather than only with the world around us. Liminality, by its very nature, includes testing and temptation and trial. We stand on a threshold, listening and reflecting, being remade from within. Jesus' time in the desert meets all the criteria for liminality, a threshold between the past and the future, like Moses and the Israelites we talked about last week. For Jesus, this was the liminal time between his baptism and the start of his public ministry. He was separated from other people in isolation. We can see in him shifts happening as he is invited, if not driven, straight into the core of who he was, into his very soul as the Son of God. Even Jesus, who will in time be called the light of the world, the good shepherd, the bread of life, even Jesus, who at his birth is called the Word made flesh, Emmanuel, the incarnation, even this Jesus seeks clarity in a liminal moment. And so off he goes into the wilderness, into the desert, a thin place where the membrane between ourselves and God is particularly thin as it was for me in Northern Ireland nearly six years ago. To this time and place, Jesus is led and accompanied by the Spirit. From the very start to the end, the Spirit is with him. In this account that appears in all three of the synoptic gospels, Jesus is both the example for us and at the same time the very threshold between our old lives and our new lives. Three questions, three tests or temptations of Jesus serve as the framework for our being grounded in God's waiting room. Questions of identity, needs, and truth. Let's take those one at a time. The first of three questions I invite you to carefully and prayerfully discern during these liminal days is the question, who am I? According to Luke, the devil starts the testing with the statement, if you are the son of God. And at the very core of this test and temptation is the issue of identity, Jesus's identity and our identities. Who am I? This is not a surface level question based on the roles that we play in our everyday lives, but a deeper space of discernment to the very soul of who we are. I am more than a husband to Sheila, father to our four kids, or minister to all of you. This is a deeper form of questioning, as it was for St. Ignatius, who says what matters most is the full realization that we come from God. We belong to God. We are destined for God. From that grounded place, we can discern to what? Or whom do we belong? Where have we come from? Where are we destined to go to next? Who am I? Today we will remember and celebrate, actually tomorrow, we'll celebrate and remember the remarkable life and mission of Martin Luther King Jr., who, as others before him, served the world from the clarity of being grounded in who they were. May we learn from and take up that example as we follow Jesus and ask, who am I? The second question for today 
in pursuit of being grounded is the question, what do I need? You see, the devil offers Jesus worldly surface and material things like bread and glory and power. All of these and more Jesus could have had. After all, he was still dripping with water from the River Jordan where he had just been baptized and declared by a voice from heaven as the Son of God. And yet in his denial of the devil, it is made clear to us that even being chosen and anointed is not enough. What we need, as Jesus did, more than anything, is dependence upon God. Dependence grounded in humility. A dependence on the divine doctor. That is both the hallmark and the outcome of God's waiting room. When we ask the question, what do I need? It begins with a clear delineation from what I want. The outcome of this exercise in the desert of liminality is a distinction between needs and wants. Just yesterday, I heard a great quote from a new staff member, Joel Bowers, who grew up on a South Dakota mint farm. He said, and I quote, We have to eat the hay and throw out the sticks. As you sit in God's waiting room, be sure to ask yourself, what do I need? The final question for today that we see coming out of the liminality of the desert for Jesus has to do with truth. What is true? I want you to notice that no one witnessed the temptations of Jesus in the desert. No one else was present according to scripture. It was just Jesus all alone, yet with God. Is there any more honest and truthful time and space in life than when we are alone and yet with God? Author and teacher Cynthia Bourgeau says that the soul is the deepest source of truth and authentic self. There is there an intuitive sense of integrity. At the very core of integrity, of course, is truth and being true to ourselves. In this world so full of ambiguity, half-truths, and lies, what is true? In the quiet solitude of God's waiting room, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. My friends, although we are not on the shore of Loch Ney in Northern Ireland, and although I am not a Celtic mystic, far from it, and I am not able to lay my hands on your head right now, I want you to know that I am praying for you. I'm praying that in this liminal season, from the confines of God's waiting room, that you will be grinded. Take this unique moment and ask, who am I? What do I need? And what is true? Know that the Spirit is leading you there and will be with you always. Amen. mountains were where you hide oh how far I'd scale the valleys if you grace the other side oh how long have I chased rivers from lonely seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply Cause in the highlands and the heartache you need the more or less inclined I would search and stop at nothing You're just not that hard to find 
So I will praise you on the mountains. I will praise you in the mountains and my way. You're the summit where my feet are. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands, in the heartache, all the same. Oh, 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 oh. oh how far beneath your glory. Does your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on sunrise to where you sweep the sinners past? Oh, how fast will you come running if just a shadow me through the night? Trace my steps through all my faith. Walk me out the other side For who could dare ascend that mountain The valley hill called Calvary Before the one I call Good Shepherd Who like a lamb was slain for me So I will praise you on the I will praise you in the mountains in my way You're the summit where my feet are I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray You're the heaven where my heart is In the highlands, in the heartache, all the same Come the pastures we call grace A mighty river flowing upwards From a deep but empty grave So I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way you're the summit where my feet are So I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray You're the heaven where my heart is in the highlands, in the heartache, all the same. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, God of all time and all space, thank you for these liminal places within which we live. We admit, God, that it is hard to embrace them at times. We prefer certainty over questions. We are looking for answers so often, but you invite us into these tender places of in-between, and you invite us to look for you in these spaces. So we pray, God, that we would have eyes to see you. We pray, God, that you would help us tend to our own souls so that we can tend to the souls of others and serve the world 
And we pray, God, that you would help us make meaning of these in-between times, that we wouldn't lose hope, that we wouldn't give up, but instead we would put our trust in you, the God who gives us just enough light for the next step in the journey. So we trust you this day, we trust you this week, and we trust you with all time. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray, as together we pray the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Your presence has made our time complete. And my ongoing prayer will be that you be grounded, grounded in God's great love for you. Now, I want to remind you, this is a really good time to consider inviting a friend or a neighbor or a colleague at work to, to come to church, so to speak. All you have to do is send them a link to our worship page at our website. But as you go now into this new week, this time of liminal living, I invite you to go, but don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. Let God remake you from within. For what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen.